Hello Multi Masters of the Many Multized Multiverses and thank you to Willem Killian for that malt mention. Thank you Willem. Um, I'm Ralphie by the way. This is the Bothy by the way. Somewhere in the Irish Sea by the way. And this is Ralphie Review 933 which is the last in a mini series that I'm doing, have been doing over the last month, the month of June 2022, where I've been reviewing 18 year old whiskies. Some of them have been tremendous. Some have been just slightly disappointing, although they remain competent enough whiskies by modern standards, but you just know with experience that some malts could be better than they are. And when you've paid a premium for these bottles of malt whiskey, you deserve to have a premium experience because you've paid for it. Sometimes with Scotch whiskies, that doesn't happen. But two years ago in Ralphie Review 834, I reviewed Le Chake 18 year old single malt for the first time. And I enjoyed it so much but I gave it 90 out of 100. And here we are, two years later, with Ralphie Review 933, and I'm coming back to this whiskey, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm enjoying this bottle as much as I enjoyed the previous bottle. And yet, it's not that long ago that Le Chic was hardly to be seen. It was a sort of discount supermarket shelf single malt and yet here we are now with some stunning permutations and versions of Le Chic. from a relatively small distillery it's Tobermory distillery on the Isle of Mull and it's not Isla and that's actually more important than it might first appear and I'll explain that when I'm reviewing this whiskey because many people who are into whiskey for the first time consider Isla to be the home of single malts that are heavily peated, that are the peat monsters, that are all phenolic and iodine and TCP and bonfires and smoky, smoky, smokiness, Lagavulin. And when you look at the other distilleries around Scotland, it's true to say that there's not many other distilleries that are quite in the category of experience, of smell and taste that you find from Isla whiskies, particularly the peated ones. Um, and what happens is that peated whiskies from other areas of Scotland, whether they be on island, islands like Le Chake at Tobermory, or whether they be in the different mainland regions of Scotland, like Ardmore, for example, which is um, in the Highlands, Highland, Highland, Speyside, Speyside, Highland, or Benromach, peat smoke, which is a Highland, Speyside, Speyside, Highland, technically it's Speyside, but it's somewhere near the border. And you have these peated whiskies out there, which are actually, they're different and once you get used to them, in many ways, they're just as good as Isla single malts, particularly when some of these big peaty Isla single malts like Ardbeg have been resting on their reputation for too long and you're starting to see cracks appear in the quality that's coming out of the warehouses simply because the casks aren't doing what they used to do. Now, I've got to add, that's just a personal opinion, but I'm not alone in this. It's been a an online discussion recently. And I tell you what, I am well impressed with the informedness of online discussions in whiskey groups. There's so many people now discovering unofficial information, which seriously helps in not just understanding whiskey, but in influencing what you buy and how much you pay for these whiskies. This landscape's changing. Scotch whiskey's land landscape is changing big time, and it's really interesting to see a lot of whiskies from around the world, which are peated, starting to get more recognition and appreciation. So, 
what advice would I give to the Scotch whisky industry is actually just up your standards a little bit. But I'm generalising because Le Chake are still getting it right. Now I've poured this whisky about half an hour ago, so it's been sitting in the glass. So let me reintroduce the Le Chake 18 year old, which in the UK is still a good, affordable, aged peated whisky. And in my opinion, for the age, delivers better value than quite a number of whiskies from Isla. Most notably, the 18 year old Bowmore, which I tasted recently, and I was shocked. Seriously, I was shocked. Bottled at 46.3% and Rich Pete it says sherry cask finish and non-chill filtered says on the label where it matters non-chill filtered. The big question is amongst the aficionados is is there any E150 burnt sugar industrial burnt sugar added to up the colour a little bit? Well the the rumour mill says yes um, and there's a very, if it's not the case, there's a very simple device that the producers can use to dispel that myth and that is just put it on the label, natural colour. It won't take up a lot of space. But who listens to me? In fact, who listens to the online community, to be honest? I think we'll see some changes before too long. On the nose. You know, there's some fine old casks in there. It's slightly treacly. It's got that molasses sort of rum thing going on. Sherry cask influenced, yep. Big phenolic nose. So is the peat quite vigorous for 18 years in the casks? Yes, and this is what separates it from Isla whiskies. At 18 years, the Isla whiskies tend to find the phenolic blast phenolic dominance is diminishing. Whereas on, on the island just north of Isla, on Mull, you find that in fact it's coming, becoming a, even a little more concentrated. And it's one of the characteristics of Tobermory peated version um, is that with age, and there's not really that many old versions around, very few and far between, but proper old Lechegs are absolute beauties. Look out for them. They will be expensive, but not as expensive as so than some other bottlings that might disappoint a little bit more. Nose again. Toffee, butterscotch, vanilla, a little bit of muscovado brown sugar thing going on, that molasses thing going on. Um, quite condensed, quite concentrated. So I'm going to have a little sip here. You don't even need to add water to this to get a really good experience. Although neat, it is a bit compressed, but you get a good rounded, intense peated arrival that you wouldn't expect for this age of a whiskey and then it can continue something more slightly more vegetal and minty and the iodine's just running like a thread through the weaving the other flavors together in the development till you get to the finish which has got lovely soft juicy tannins old sherry cask and it's delightfully clean i am of course now going to add some water because it's generally what i do although not to all whiskies just to most whiskies. In this instance, hang about, this isn't a teaspoon, this is a teaspoon, this is too small. This is my soda spoon. And I don't measure with a soda spoon, I measure with a teaspoon. I'm putting three millilitres in. I'll add a little more later. We never add all our water at once to a whiskey. We add in instalments. A little bit of water, give it time, sniff, taste, bit more water, give it time, sniff, taste. It's the way you do it. No shaky shakies, nice and gentle. There's a lovely elegance in parallel with the intensity of the peatiness. Um, 
I would rec for, for anybody who likes peated whiskies, I highly recommend this. In fact, I also recommend you kind of stock up a bit. It's a little bit of coal tar, soft, creamy coal tar going on in the nose once I've added water. Makes it all the more interesting. It's when you add water that you start to become aware of the depth of maturation, which justifies that 18 year old statement. It's been 18 years. Every whiskey in this bottle has had a minimum of 18 years in casks maturing. And the res result is, apart from retaining quite an intense phenolic, it's, it's gained a, a complexity in tandem with the, this phenolic intensity. And it makes it such a singular, interesting single malt. Um, it's as good as the last time in many respects. Slightly minty. I'm getting a touch of smoky mezcal as well in the nose. Quite interesting. You get that now and again with peated whiskies. Lovely and fresh, but mellowed, rounded. And the phenolic, once, you, once you're patient enough with it, it sort of softens slightly and it reveals a greater complexity. Not a huge complexity, but you get a, a stronger impression of the age and the cask influence. And inevitably, the longer you leave this, in, in the glass, this whiskey, with a drop of water in it, the more the casks will start to exert themselves a little to take on that big peat monster phenolic lechake. And the result is of an excellent fireside winter warmer dram and an absolute top class alternative to your Isla staples which are generally at that age a lot more expensive or a lot more weakly presented in the bottle because that's what you get. The mintiness gets stronger over time as well. You get almost a sort of mint, bitter mint and a butter mint. You get various kind of mints. It kind of shifts in the direction over time, if you add a little bit more water, that mintiness will kind of mellow out into a kind of butter mint. But for a little more complexity, just add a little less water as I have. And you get, you get a delightful single malt, which I'm delighted to be recommending to you. Yeah. So don't you, don't you forget who told you so. <laughs> it's my job, you see. So I'm sitting here in the bothy. To, to share my journey, to help you with your journey, because the fact is, the more expectations of quality that whiskey customers have, then the higher the quality the whiskey remains. Because when the quality of whiskey falls away too far, people will stop buying it. And then distilleries will have a serious load of work in their hands trying to turn things around because all they needed to do was invest an extra few hundred thousand pounds in their cask policy and run the run their stills just a little bit further into the fence. It's not rocky science. But what do I know? I'm not an expert. Oh, it's going bigger now. There's a kind of soft sherried sweetness as the casks come out to meet. A little bit edgy, a little bit balsamic in the in the corners there. Delightfully so I might add. Delightful balsamic. That's a little bit slight hot ginger, green ginger note. Beautiful stuff. What am, what am I going to mark this? I'm going to mark this. 89. 89 out of 100. It's a malt mark, it's an integrity malt mark, and I know, because I can hear you, you say, oh Ralphie, last time you marked it 90, now you've marked 89, so is it one point down, and does that mean you don't like it as much as you used to? That's not the case, 
because the whiskey hasn't changed that much. But my palate changes slightly. So does yours. And the more experienced you get, the more you notice the subtleties of change. I enjoy the experience, but I've tasted it before. And therefore, the novelty of it no longer resides in the memory banks. Because when I reviewed the bottle two years ago, I kept drinking it for another year. So I didn't finish it till last year. Now I've bought another bottle. It's not quite the same but in it many ways it's just as good so a markdown is nothing disparaging it's just the natural reaction to the experience over time and this is why I am time stamping this review in the title as 2022 which is your way of knowing that I've reviewed it before I'm Rafi join me for my extras 933 extras in which I shall be talking uh, about quality of casks, part two, because there's a lot to know. See you soon.